All right, so in this video, we're going to do a walkthrough of the new multifamily development model uh, that I just recently built. And this is not to be confused with Spencer's apartment development model, which is somewhat of a masterpiece in itself. Um, I've created this just because, um, uh, you know, sort of, sort of like art, although a little bit nerdier. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, you can build models in endless ways and everybody has their own style. And, you know, we have one multifamily development model on the website. And so I decided to add another one that's more in my style. Um, so um, there's no real particular advantage over using Spencer's or mine. Um, there's just a sort of aesthetic feel uh, and there, there's minor differences. So, you know, I hope you check this out. And it's just another model that you add to your toolkit. Um, so, you know, in this video, I'll do as I always do. I'll walk you through each tab and just sort of how it works. And again, this model's free to download um, on our website. And so you can head over to Adventures in CRE and check it out. All right, so this model has five tabs um, and it's built very similarly to my condo development model, my hotel development model, and my also newly released RV park development model as well. Um, so you'll, if, if you're familiar with my models, you'll see the, the similarities. Um, so we have a summary and assumptions tab. We have our annual cash flow tab, our monthly cash flow tab, a budget, and a waterfall tab. So we'll start with the summary and assumptions. We have, well, let's see, I'll zoom out. We have one, two, three, 10 boxes, all with um, individual purposes. And so the top one here is where you'll put your, your name, street address, city, and state. Um, of the project you're working on. The timing section has uh, important timing components. Analysis start. Uh, this sets off all the, um, the dates throughout the model. So you'll notice here, and then you'll notice in the waterfall tab, um, the dates which, which are triggered here. We have a construction start date, um, which technically, um, can be hard coded, although right now I have it uh, set as one month after uh, the analysis start. But I'm actually going to turn this blue uh, because I, I think you can you can break that formula and put in whatever you want. Construction completion date, which takes which is not an input but takes the input down here and moves it forward from your construction start date to give you your completion date. Your operating start date, uh, which also can technically be an assumption we'll turn that blue and I just set it as one month after completion um, but that is uh, technically an assumption and then your hold period um, and you know what the hold period drop down is broken so I'm going to keep going with the video um, but I'll have that fixed um, for the impact. you know what can actually fix this quickly in the video and it'll be cool to show you so I'm going to unhide um, the rows and what I want to do is connect this down here uh, don't know that I want to connect it to zero but from one to ten we can we can um, add this drop down so I'll come up to data data validation we have a list you'll see it's been thrown off so we'll just come up and we'll change that and I'm going to put zero. I'll just um, take one from 10. Click OK. And um, our drop down should be fixed. Great. OK. So that section, uh, or at least that cell, and now I'm going to hide this real quick. So this cell is where you're going to put your hold period, and then you'll have your exit date. The next is um, space details. Now this comes in from here, and we'll get over here in a little bit. And this is where you fill in your, your unit types and all that, but let's keep going with space details. Um, here you'll put your land area in square feet. It'll adjust to acres over here, your number of buildings, average number of floors, your FAR, gross square feet, you'll put this in manually. And then your rentable square feet is calculated over here. And these are important um, because they play a role over here 
in your budget. And you'll see here, I actually took this from a condo model. So let me just update that to rentable square feet. I'll update this to rentable square feet too. So in here you have parking and then your parking ratio. Uh, below that you have your sources and uses. Rolls up um, from your budget. So all well, your uses roll up from your budget here. And you can see it's pulling in from this main section up top here. Your um, uses roll in from your monthly cash flow tab, but you can actually, you should um, be able to see it down here. You'll see your, your equity, which is here, and then your debt is here. All right, so let's keep going. If you're development financing, here's where you put your loan to cost control. Because we don't have circular references, we use this. And so if you wanted to dial in your, um, true loan to cost and you should actually add a section here that says this is your true loan to cost um what you can do and i believe goal seek will work for this um you can set this cell let's say we want to um 55 loan to cost by changing your loan to cost control there you go so there you see that sets your, your loan to your true loan to cost by using um, goal seek. And although I don't think I have it here, I could set a macro that actually um, does that automatically, but you can also use goal seek as shown here, or you can manually dial it in. But um, in the next version, I'll make that easier. Um, here you can dial in um, your loan fees. And this also has to be hard coded in rather than a percent just to avoid circular references. Uh, below that, you'll put your um, interest rate. And I'm going to put, um, in fact, this is really your interest rate spread. And then um, the curve that you're going to use um, is dropped in the monthly cash flow tab. I hope that's probably going to be too many. Maybe I can shorten it like this. Okay, that works. And so this is your, so you have a 600 basis point spread over SOFR. And you'll see it says 600. I'm just assuming um, you're using SOFR. So I put this code in. Um, and you can see it here. I wrote the text here, SOFR plus. And then this is the number and then BPS. And then you'll drop in your yield curve here and so you can pull that from there's a couple websites such as like chatham financial and you can drop the yield curve in as a projection and then you'll see the basis points are here and then your interest rate comes out below so you have your ceiling and your floor so these are your caps for your, your interest rates as they're variable and floating and this is a holdover i don't think this goes anywhere i'm actually probably going to erase this yeah, so it's not going to anything. So cash sweeps is something that happens in condo development, but not something typically see here. So just quickly edit while we're doing this. Um, that. So you have your ceiling and your floor. All right, so permanent debt assumptions, permanent debt assumptions. You have your loan to value, your interest rate, points. Uh, if you have interest only payments, your loan amortization. And then this is your refi cap rate, so you'll get your value. So it basically will, um, find the date at which you're valuing, uh, this project at which I guess we'll call stabilization. Um, and you can see that, where are we? 
out here. And this gets triggered based on your refi date here. So it'll value based on the date here and it'll look at the forward 12 months of NOI. It'll, it'll put a cap rate on um, that forward 12 months of NOI, give you this value. And then your loan amount um, is based on the loan to value based on that. And so proceeds distributed as a net of points, your amortization payments, interest only payments, your minimum debt service coverage ratio, the loan payoff at exit, and then as we discussed, your refi date. Next up top here, we have returns, your total cash outflow profit, your equity multiple and IRR, both or for unlevered and levered at the project level, and then for the limited partner and the general partner. And then here we have um, our operating assumptions. So you have the ability to put up to six different unit types. So you'll drop whatever, however you want to describe them here. Uh, the number of units, the rent per month, and this is based on the rent at stabilization. So not, you know, if you have rent today, but your project takes 18 months, but you know rent today, you may want to um, think about what that rent would be 18 months from today, and that's what you'll put in here. Um, average square feet, which you'll put in as well, and then you get your dollar per square foot a month. And then this all rolls up down here, your total units, your average rent per month, and your average dollar per square foot a month. I guess we can add average um, square foot per unit, and I'll do that later. We'll just keep going in the interest of time because we're already at 12 minutes and we're only on the summary and assumptions tab. Here you have your non-revenue model units. This doesn't really impact the model at all other than to give you um, well, a little bit to update you know, cost per unit and total units. Uh, it does not impact the cash flow at all because these model units do not go through the cash flow. All right, moving on, we have our lease details. So units pre-leased, the lease up pace, lease up period, uh, free rent, and then the stabilized free rent. And then you have your average lease contract length. Here's rental growth, stabilized occupancy uh, as a percent, and then your general vacancy and credit loss. And down here, you have your other income. You have the ability to put up to four different um, types of other income. And I won't go through the details. They're pretty self-explanatory. And then operating expenses, you have the ability to put in 13 items. Uh, we have a unique site. So just to back up, you have the ability to alter between fixed and variable. And as you know, variable costs are incurred depending on the occupancy rate of the building. Uh, for taxes, we have um, a unique section. So you'll put in the pro uh, projected tax assessed value. You'll put in the mill rate. And then the formula out here will calculate your um, projected taxes for any given year. Uh, the rest are the same. Your PM fee is um, a percent of EGR. And then your CapEx is a percent of NOI. And then you have your annual expense growth down here. Our exit assumptions, exit cap rate, sale expenses, and then here you can see the total sale price, sale per unit, and then sale net of proceeds. And then down here you have a summary analysis, so, uh, or sorry, a scenario analysis or a sensitivity analysis. Um, and you can see the impact of your exit cap rate which is here, and your vacancy rate uh, and how that impacts your equity multiple and your IRR. All right, that's the, bul the bulk of all the things you need to know are in the summary tab, so hopefully the rest of this goes fairly quickly. Uh, here you have your annual summary cash flow roll up. You have development, operating cash flow, disposition, unlevered and levered, and some unhidden stragglers. We'll just hide them. And then monthly is the same. Uh, you have a little more detail. Um, what I did, which was unique to this, is rather than have so much complexity and detail, 
with all the line items of the construction budget. I actually rolled up all the construction and gave you the ability to just um, alter the bell curve um, on this one total row. You can get very nuanced in development construction and they're all projections anyway. And the impact on returns is, I don't want to say totally negligible, but close to negligible, you know, um, with how you alter these cash flows. So, um, you know, we'll try this, see how it goes. You just take the cash flows, roll them up, and then you can you know, alter between this steady growth formula, or you could do the bell curve. You know, here we have a steep bell curve, but you know, you could make it moderate. Uh, or even the, the cash flows out a little more, but creates that that sort of bell shape with the costs. Um, and yeah, it is a it is a beastly formula. So there's a lot of options. Um, so I, we're going to try that out with just one line item. And to me, honestly, I think that may suffice and get you, you know, where you need to be. Uh, below that, loan fees, interest reserve, total development costs. Down here's the draw schedule. Again, here's where you're going to drop in your um, forward curve, your SOFR forward curve. Here's where your basis point comes in um, from some uh, operating cash flow. Uh, your disposition on lever lever. So the budget um, tab, this is similar to my other models. You'll see um, I was messing around. You can add line items. And when you delete them, you'll notice over here that this disappears. So if we put it back in, you'll see it reappear. Um, so you, you have this section here and then you have up to six oops, sections out here you to fill in different line items under major categories. All right, and the last piece is the waterfall. And here you have the ability to split between your IRR or your equity multiple, and you'll see how things update. Um, split up limited partner and general partner uh, splits here. Oh, so that equals um, your IRR hurdle, and then you have the ability to do a preferred return. And you'll notice if you do a preferred return, you have the ability to um, give the GP an equal return before you go to the next uh, tier. Uh, or the GP can get just a return of capital only. So you'll, you'll see here tier one, uh, the return hurdle is 10%. You'll see that the LP gets it. And here the GP is at a zero. They just get their capital back. Um, but if you flip it back to an equal return, you'll see now the GP gets a 10% return before going into the next hurdle. And here's where you'll drop in uh, the promote um, to, to get into uh, tier two. And then here, if you don't have... A second hurdle, just put the IRR super high so you'll never hit it. Um, but if you do have a second hurdle, um, uh, you could put out whatever you want and then make sure to um, update your remaining cash flow split. And then I did something interesting with the asset management fees down here is a percent of NOI. Um, it's not totally common, but is not completely uncommon either. So it's more incentive based for the for the GP uh, rather than just saying, hey, here's the value of the building and I'm going to charge a fee. This is a way to say, hey, I'm going to earn this fee and it's going to be rewarded off of the profitability of, the, of the, the property. So that's what we have in here now. That is it. So um, I hope that's helpful. And, you know, I'm excited to get this model out. So, you know, feel free to uh, go to the website and download and um I'll see you in the next video. Thanks.